No, praise the Lord. I'm going to ask everyone if they can mute their phones when they're not speaking um, so we can avoid background noise and, um, and we're going to get started. So good morning to you all on this beautiful day. The Lord has given us another day. Um, his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So we welcome, we welcome you once. We welcome you twice. I know you've heard that before. I always love that greeting. We welcome you once. We welcome you twice. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I am Prophetess Denise Green, the leader of Arise with Purpose Women's Ministry. And I am blessed that you're here. We have been in existence since 2015. And God has been with us and brought us to new levels. And we've cried together. We've laughed together. We've giggled together. <laughs> and I'm just blessed to have women that have worked with me. Some have come and gone, but they, you know, no bitterness between us, no resentment, because we know that they're going on to do a work for the Lord. And um, I'm just blessed that the Lord let us have them for a while on um, with Arise. And we have uh, Denise Parker. She's been with us for almost since the beginning. And um, Vanessa Porter, she is also works uh, a member of Arise. And Katrina um, Moore King, who is on, not on screen today, um, but she is on, on by phone. These ladies, um, have worked with me and co-laborers in the Lord. And there are others that can't be here today, um, but they are such a blessing. I also want to encourage you for uh, the hearers. There's so many events that are going on, but there are powerful women that have women's ministries and fellowships. Please attend one. <laughs> Please attend one. Come out, support. Be supportive, be prayerful, and support. Um, come and be blessed. Amen. So I'm going to call on um, Prophetess Katrina to open us in prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise hallelujah, Lord. hallelujah. Thank Everyone, you, close their eyes and just bring your mind in and just focus on the Lord. Just create a picture of the Lord being in our midst. Hallelujah. For the word says, where two or three are gathered together, two or three of his people are gathered together. He's in the midst. Yes. So we know there's more than two of us on this Zoom call. So he's right now in the midst. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank we you, worship Jesus. you this morning. Yes. We glorify you this morning. Our eyes yes. are on you this morning. Our eyes yes. are all on you. Yes, Only Lord. on you. We say welcome, our Abba Father. We welcome you in the midst of this time of worship, mm -hmm. in the midst of this time of prayer and praise to you, our Abba Father. Oh, Truly, yes. you've been a good God. We thank you, Father, for this glorious day. This day we've never, mm -hmm. ever, ever seen before. This day, the 20th day of May, where we can come together on one accord with one mind to seek you and to hear a word from you, yes, to hear Lord. a word from you. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. Truly, the sun is shining. Even in the midst of the clouds, the sun is still shining. And mm. we thank you. Yes, we thank God. you for a good night's rest for all of us this day, Father, Hallelujah. and allowing us to be in the land of the living. Thank you for keeping us safe over the night, our loved ones safe over the yes, night, Father. oh, Father. And thank you for calling each and every one of our names this morning that not only did our eyes pop open and we woke up, but we got up physically mm. still clothed in our right mind yes, and we are. thank you and we glorify you thank you father for reminding us that there's still work to be done and that's why we're still here that's mm. why we're here 
because there's still work to be done for the kingdom's sake. So we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, your word talks about good soil and bad soil. Yeah. So we pray that as, um, as the word declares, our heart is considered soil, that this day, this very hour, that you would transform our, our hearts, O oh Lord, into hearts of flesh, good yes, soil, God. ready and right to receive the word that will come forth from your mighty woman of God, Ginger, this morning. In yes, the name God. of Jesus, name we pray, Jesus. Father, that as, as the word comes forth, as the anointed word of God falls on this woman of God, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we hear it, as our ears are unstopped to hear clearly what does say of the Lord, that it might, O oh Lord, resonate in our spirit, man, and take forth root and grow in the name of Jesus and bring forth a harvest in the name of Jesus. Yes. So we thank you for this new season of transformation, oh, how you love yes. us in this new season. You're transforming each and every one of us, Father. We came on this line one way, but we thank you, Jesus. When all is said and done, by the time this event is over, we will be transformed and renewed. Our mind will be renewed. Our hopes will be renewed. Our, our vision spiritually will be renewed. And yes. thank you, Father, for the new thing that you're doing in our life in this season, doors opening. Father, we thank you, Father, even as you use this woman of God, you, your word declares that we uh, who are in leadership, oh Lord, in the body of Christ, that we are called to equip the body. So we thank you that this woman of God, Ginger, will equip us this day. Yes, and that as God. she has been given the keys, Father, it will unlock, it will unlock giftings and clarity regarding the calling on each and every one of our lives in the name of Jesus. So mm -hmm. thank you. For giving us, oh Lord, clarity like never before, strength for the climb, and thank you for this burden, this burden regarding our youth, oh Father, and how you're going to use this word to help us, oh Lord, to be used mightily to reach our youth, oh Lord, locally as well as around the globe. Yes, so thank Lord. you for loving us with an unending love, and we thank you for your presence, which is right now in the midst. We glorify you, we magnify you, we lift you up in mm, Jesus' name. Good. We praise you and we thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for that powerful prayer. Hallelujah. Totally does praise set the atmosphere. Thank you. Praise thank you. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel uh, led to sing a song, so I'm going to do that and then following that song the next voice you will hear will be um, a powerful testimony by mrs susan murphy amen praise the lord so you can join in if you feel led to and desire to bless that wonderful name of jesus bless that wonderful name Jesus, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus, no other name I know. Well, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name. I know well there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Then there's this part, Lord. Send your power, Lord, send your power, Lord, send your power, Lord, 
Send your power, Lord. Send your power, Lord. Send your power, Lord. Send your power, Lord. Send your power. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Power in the name of Jesus. Bless power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Say his name. Jesus, he's my healer. 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 Jesus, he's my keeper. Jesus, he's my way. Jesus, he's my Lord. Jesus, he's my King. Jesus. Jesus, he's my healer. Jesus, he's my peace. Jesus, he's my king. Jesus, he's my way. Jesus, he's my way. Jesus, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Well, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus, no other name I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Give him praise. Glory. Hallelujah. Give him Thank praise. you, Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Hey, God. Have yes, your Lord. in our lives, yes. O oh Lord. There's no other name we know but the name of Jesus. And Hallelujah. The name of Jesus, Jesus, oh God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Burdens Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Cares are taken. Hallelujah. Your yoke is ah. easy. Your burden is light. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. The Jesus. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brings healing. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The name there is wisdom. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, Susan. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, wonderful, God fearing women. Um, I'm just Let's so grateful, grateful for this opportunity that. Denise, prophetess Denise, uh, gave me. Um, I met this wonderful woman um, almost like nine to ten years ago um, in a temple establishment where I actually nur I'm a nurse. Um, and it's the truth. God, God will show you who is His through the fruits of the Spirit. And when I first met her, I knew that she was anointed, and she was definitely. Um, had the fruits of the spirit and had a love for the Lord. And, and so did her husband. Um, and I'm very grateful through my journey for meeting them. 
And um, just a little background of myself. I'm actually um, a born again Christian saved. Um, I grew up in a Christian home. My father is also a pastor. But um, back then at, at, at a young age, I, I have to say use that term loosely because, you know, it's, it's one thing being brought up in a Christian home um, and hearing the word all the time, but applying it into your life every day. Uh, I, I've always said this one quote to a lot of my friends. Um, it's one thing to be brought up in a Christian home, but it's different when you find Christ in your journey later on in your life. It's a different experience. And um, so I have to say, I really truly found Christ, you know, even though I was saved at a young age, I really got to have a really deep, close relationship in my late teenage, early adulthood. Um, and really came to know who he was, that he's a God of love, a God of mercy, his grace is sufficient. Um, but there's times where, you know, we go up those hills and valleys where we go through things. And um, my testimony is I actually had endured a lot of um, abuse uh, in a teenage years, a lot of what people would call church hurt and church abuse. Um, and that is a very big growing thing. And a lot of, it's a lot of churches where, you know, a lot of young women or men are not being discipled properly by good, strong, God-fearing people. And I grew up in a church where, you know, I was really hurting because I went through a lot of, I went through a, a, a trauma in my life and I really depended on the women of the church, just um, like my Sunday school teachers and, and a pastor's wife. And it, it was the confidentiality was pretty much broken, which kind of led me into a different path where I, I didn't want to be in the church, you know, cause you know, I, I was, you know, we're supposed to be followers of Christ. So we're supposed to depict who our loving father is. And if, if we're seeing that kind of behavior, then we're thinking that God is the same way. And he is not, we're all Christians and we make mistakes but also God wants us to use that discernment when we talk to people and he, he'll give us that spirit to let us know, you know, it's okay to open up to that person. And, you know, that, that's been a big thing with me is being hurt a lot in the church. Um, but the Lord has led me to a good church, a Bible believing church. I go to Calvary Chapel and I was really um, led, you know, in my spirit, you know, by Pastor Joe Foch and just listening to a lot of his um, sermons and, and just really getting to know who God is. There's knowing God, but knowing intimately who the Lord is. And he is a loving God. And um, as I share with Prophetess Denise, I, I had gone through a very difficult season about five years ago, five, six years ago. Um, my husband, who also was a pastor's son, um, he uh, stepped out on our marriage and um, and I went through a difficult time because I always believed that marriage is one, you know, you're, you're, that's it, that, you know, God hates divorce. And, um, and I wanted to glorify and honor God in everything I did. And um, there was a lot that happened. And I know I can be transparent um, that um, another woman became pregnant and during that time frame. And I was devastated. And, but I, 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 I first, you know, the first thought that came to my mind was, be still and know that I am God. I am going to get you through this journey of transformation um, and the verses of, you know, renewing your mind and just really getting into the word during that time. And it all really came down to um, April, 2020, when my uh, divorce was actually finalized, we were separated for two years. And um, that was the time during the pandemic, uh, when COVID started and um, they needed nurses to be removed out of their um, original offices. And I ran um, the COVID operation for Jean's hospital for eight months. And I was saying to myself, God, you are a funny God, because <laughs> you, I'm going through this trauma of signing divorce papers. And, and two days later, I have to be out in the field, you know, with the patients and, and, and not knowing what this pandemic was and really going through a really hard time. So it was two choices on the shelf. I remember that quote, serving God and serving self. So God gave me this ministry where it was a blessing to actually count it all joy. You know, I counted all joy that I went through this trial, 
because um, going through a divorce, God led me to a lot of good God-fearing women who held me up and, and comforted me. And I made a promise to the Lord that if it is your will, if I meet somebody, um, let him love you more than me and let him serve you and have a heart for you. And um, I was uh, sharing with Prophet Sneeze. I did get married two months ago. He led me to my wonderful, amazing husband, Christopher, who has such a desire to serve and he just loves the Lord um, with all his heart. And it's, it's amazing to see a man that just, you know, puts God first in everything, wants to be the spiritual leader of our house, wants to serve him in any way possible. And it's like just reflecting on that moment of going through such a deep despair and grief that, you know, going through that whole time and, and seeing that the Lord, he never left me or forsake me. He was carrying me to the next chapter of my life to be able to honor and glorify and serve him in, in ways that I never thought possible. So my testimony is, you know, just wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will uh, bring it to pass. And, you know, he wants us to take his yoke, as Prophetess Denise says, because it's, it's light, you know, and, and we don't have to go through this world alone. God, God will bring the right people into our lives. And I think it's so important as women to have that sisterhood and um, to be um, able to go to each other in prayer or just have those friendships that will uplift us. And, you know, because we're in this world also to, you know, to, to bring the good news to others, but also to just really just love on each other and, and uplift each other and, you know, get us through this journey together to, to win souls for Christ and to help us to honor God, to bring out each other's talents that will serve God at the end. So thank you so much for this time and this opportunity to share. Praise God. Praise the Lord. That, that was powerful. Susan. Amen. Just as she said, you never know here, here, my husband, you know, and I, we went to ready care. Um, I wasn't feeling well. And this is how we connected with dear Susan, beautiful Susan. And I, as I, um, I don't know if everyone was on, but um, I did say earlier, she is a cosmetologist, does beautiful work. If you want to be glamour, uh, feel glamorous, if you have a special occasion, she's the person you can connect with. She's on Facebook and um, 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 she can put in her information in the chat, but your testimony, I'm so glad that we connected. God had us divinely a divine appointment set up <laughs> so so we could connect with you and she's been such a blessing each time you know I've seen her always smiling um no matter what she's going through she was always smiling always trusting in the Lord even ups and downs just giving putting her total total faith in him your testimony speaks to the youth going through church hurt your testimony speaks to singles waiting on the Lord for that special someone. Your testimony speaks to marriages. <laughs> so your testimony was plural, a plural blessing and made a plural impact to the hearers and to us today. And um, this will be recorded, it's uploaded on our channel and it will reach many. So thank you for your obedience, your submission, your courage. We applaud the woman in you, the woman you are and the Christ in you. God Thank bless. you. Um, now that we, um, in this part of the program, I'm going to call on um, Denise Parker will read our mission statement. Good morning, sisters. Good morning. Um, mission statement. Morning. The Arise with Purpose Women's Ministry is one that believes that Jesus is the only way to the heaven and the only begotten son of the father. We believe in these essential things about Jesus Christ, that he was born a virgin, lived a sinless life, and, was, and we believe in his vicarious death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. We are inspired by the Holy Spirit to minister to the downtrodden, depressed, oppressed, and possessed. We are his ministers of flame, Psalms 104.4. We can do nothing without Jesus, John 15.5.
The spirit of the Lord is upon us. He has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Our mission is to encourage, exhort, and catapult women to the place where God has called them. We have several virtual anointed sessions throughout the year, as well as edifying teachings on social media. We want every woman to know their God-given purpose for their lives and to know their spiritual gifts and talents. There are three facets to arise with Purpose Women Ministry. Identity, purpose, and authority in Christ. Now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority to trample over the kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Luke 10, 19, the Passion Translation. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Isaiah 61, King James Version. Amen. Amen. Thank you, lovely. Um, that is our mission statement. That is what the Lord uh, placed on my heart years ago when we started. And um, now I'm going to share this, that when we started the ministry, and I've said this before, I did not see myself <laughs> as, as, a, as a leader. I wasn't going to, to birth it. I wasn't going to talk about it or you know, uh, at, at all I had in mind to continue a ministry that I was a part of um, many years ago called Dorcas. And my mother was the inspiration to that acronym of Dorcas. It was called Daughters of the Resurrected Christ, Anointed for Service. Um, and I was involved with um, two other powerful women in Christ. And the ministry was going well, it was doing well, it was, we were reaching many. And um, I thought of, well, for some reason it had stopped that we went off and did our individual ministries. Um, but I thought that that ministry would continue. And so I said, well, Lord, we'll just get back, you know, Dorcas will reconvene. And then I felt the Lord saying, no, I want you to do this ministry arise. And so I received two prophetic words about it. And I'm, I'm saying that to say, it, when we know our identity in Christ, we, we know what God is and we know the calling on our lives. That gives us boldness and courage to go forward and to move forward. So I, I was seeing myself, I didn't see myself as Christ saw me. I didn't see myself at the finish line. That's what God, where God sees us all. And even in that transition, that tra to that transformation, that total transformation in Christ, we must see ourselves as the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We must see ourselves as more than conquerors and we will walk in it <laughs> when, we, when we believe that. Um, and God shows us many times, just as Susan said, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us because he calls us just as he called Gideon, mighty man of valor. You know, he called him um, forward and Gideon thought himself to be least in his father's house. He thought himself to be cowardly, not me, but God gives us that identity that we are ambassadors for Christ that we are filled, we're filled with his spirit. So why not you? It takes a certain person to do the work you're doing and only you can do it. <laughs> we can't compare ourselves to anyone else. Just as Susan was saying, all her experiences has brought us to the woman who she is today. And so it takes a Susan to minister to a specific person that I can't reach or a person that Denise or or Pastor Sharon, or, or Deaconess Ginger, or Vanessa, or Prophetess Katrina, that we cannot reach. So God does need us. He does need us. Yes, he can send someone else, but you're the one. 
that he's given the burden, he's given the 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 baby to, if you will, the to birth. And this arise has been my baby. <laughs> She's been my daughter. In fact, I even had dreams about multiple dreams about a baby, about a girl. <laughs> and God, and that was how one of the ways that God spoke to me and said, Yes, yes, it's me. Don't doubt it. Go forward. So I want to encourage you, know your identity, continue to speak over your life, declare over your life, prophesy over your life every day. Lord, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And there's nothing that you can't do through me. All things are possible. All things are possible. Jesus, I always love Marilyn Hickey's line. I always sticks, has stuck with me. Jesus lives big in me today. And we can declare that, prophesy that over your life, no matter what you're facing. Amen. So that's my word on to identity today, identity in Christ. And now we're at the place where we are to receive our wonderful speaker of the hour, Deaconess Ginger Grave, Graves. Um, and I have the pleasure of reading her bio. Amen. Deaconess Ginger M. Graves has been a member of the Mitchell Baptist Church for over 30 years, where Reverend James N. Graves is the pastor. She has earned an associate degree in business administration and a bachelor's degree in organizational management from Pennsylvania State University. She serves as the director of youth ministries and Vacation Bible School. She has been married to Deacon Curtis Graves for over 30 years, and they are the proud parents of five children and grandparents of 18 grandchildren and one great grandchild. So now you will hear the lovely Deaconess Ginger Graves. Good morning, ladies, how are you? <laughs> How's everyone today? Turn on your, just good say hi to me. Good, <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, good morning. I, <clears throat> I just thank God for the opportunity to be here today. Um, uh, this just, this reminds me of, um, this is how things happen in my life. I ran into Denise, um, <laughs> at a at a birthday party for uh, my brother-in-law and we just were talking in general which is usually what happens and she invited me to talk to you ladies today I don't I've never done anything like this so um I'm praying through it um and I remember and I and I, and Denise when we were talking I said I felt like I was being led to have a conversation Amen. and not so much lecture. Amen. Well, and I told you, I said, I'm going to type up something and I'm going to have an outline and all this. Well, I have a new computer and all that outline and everything that I thought was saved in that computer. It's gone. So <laughs> I went up. And I can't get into any of my electronics this morning. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to go on faith. Amen. We're going to let God lead. Yes. Um, and we're going to let him direct because he does it better than anyone else, than anyone we that I know. Amen. Um, so our theme today, would you read our theme for me, our Denise? Theme, mm -hmm. Our theme is building lasting relationships with our youth. Building lasting relationships with our youth. And the scripture that the Lord gave me when Denise first started talking to me about this was, just a minute, I had it up. Matthew. Yes. Matthew 7. 7, 7, seven and 8. Mm -hmm. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Um, and 
that scripture to me just says, ask God, trust God, and expect his blessings. Mm -hmm. That's how I live each day. I ask him, and then I have to trust that what I'm asking him, that he will supply my needs according to his will. That's how I lead my grands. That's how I lead my children. Um, I, I am a mother of five and I'm being led to just share a testimony with you. Um, I lost my oldest daughter um, back in um, 2020. Uh, she had a heart transplant. We had her for two years after the heart transplant. Um, and I learned so much from that relationship with her. I was able to um, to nurture, but at the same time, you have to, I, my goal with her was to make sure she had a reason to fight every morning when she got up. So it was a learning process of how do you balance? Because <clears throat> when you have a child that's going through, you know, you just pour in everything you have. You know, you want to give them the world. You want to do everything for them. You want to make sure they don't struggle. You want to make sure they don't hurt. Um, and with her, and and I always, believe it or not, she was my, they call her my prodigal child. That's what I called her. She was my 1980s baby. And uh, she gave us a run for our money. <laughs> but she was also a blessing because she taught me how to love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. She taught me how to, pour in without, I want to say, without um, making her totally dependent on me. I always told my children, I want you to be independent of me and dependent on God. That was my, that's my goal in raising them. Um, I want you to be independent of me and your dad. And I want you to learn to depend on God for everything because he's the only one that can give you everything. Everybody else will fail, including me, but he will give you everything. So I, I, I just, it, 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 it was just a, a time in my life when I was learning and I was gleaming as I watched him. She had four children of her own who we, we had to, we ended up raising. We had a set of twins and her older brother and her baby sister. And um, it, it's, it's, it was just a time in my life when the Lord really made me get in tune to my adult children, to my grandchildren. <laughs> he taught me how to, the difference between a mother and a mother with children. He taught me the difference between the different personalities of each individual. Everyone has their own personality. No one person is the same. My twins, girls, they, they used to switch personalities every six months. <laughs> you know, they would swap personalities on me. Um, and then I look at them today, they're in their third year of college and Shadi's married and he's given us our first great grand, you know, Azad and, and he's in college and God is just good. God has brought them from a mighty long way. And, and when you think everything that you've been through or you, everything that you've done, does it matter? He comes back and he shows you through the way they live their lives that it was not in vain when they come back to you and, and they challenge you to give them information. You know, I had my, one of the twins come to me one day and she says, grandma, where in the Bible does it says you can't have sex um, 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 before marriage? And I had, you know, I had some, some, I always leave pamphlets laying around when they come visit. I always have these little pamphlets around, um, that said, you know, to talk about what about sex or what about friendships or what about, you know, I, I just leave them on the desk because, <laughs> you know, they're newsy. So <laughs> they pick them up and they read them. And, but, um, and, and even in those conversations with her, I don't think I always, I, I never try to go on what I think. I try to go back to 
I go pick up the, I go find those panthers and I let them guide me because they're biblical mandates on what God wants in our lives. Not so much what grandma wants because grandma don't want you to do nothing. <laughs> but God says, this is why you shouldn't do nothing. You know, and, and I think that's been, that's been a really big thing for me. I remember when my daughter started traveling, um, she's, she's 30 something now. And I remember her calling me in church one day and she was in tears and she said, mom, I said, yes. She said, these people in, in this church I'm visiting, they told me I'm not saved. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean? She said, they told me if I don't speak in tongues that I'm not saved. I said, and what does the word of God say? She said, well, I was always taught that that was a gift that God gives you. That's not something that everybody does. And I said, amen. <laughs> said, know the word, know the word of God. God gives gifts to everyone. But that's what I mean by when you talk to your kids, when you keep an open dialogue and an open conversation. Do I, do I win every time I speak to them? Do I give them everything that I think they need to make the right decisions? No, but I pray that God has given me something or they heard something during our conversation that they will take with them. Amen. Um, so I guess today is, an, I want to glean I want to give you some of the tools that the Lord has given me to reach my grands and my children, my grown children, <laughs> and my um, and prayerfully now my great grand. The Lord is growing our family. Um, so what the reason we're here today is because I was having a conversation with uh, Prophetess Denise at our birthday party. And I have a 13 year old granddaughter and her name is Genesis. And she is my oldest girl's baby girl, the one that I lost. Um, and about, I guess, two years ago, um, we started out with, um, I, had, I, would I would buy her books. Um, she would ask me to buy books and things of that nature. And so I started buying books about how God wants us to grow and how God wants us to do this and how God wants us to do that. And then I put in some of the books that she loves, you know, and we talk about those. And um, But over the years, it's, 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 it's become a, a, a tradition for us. It's something we look forward to doing now. Um, we would, she would read a part of a story to me and then I would, we would talk about what that meant to her. You know, like, what did that part of that story mean to you? You know, what did, what did you get from that? And then she would tell me what she got from it. And then I would tell her what I got from it. And, and, and that transitioned into, I, I was online one day and I found this little pocket and it said 15 Bible verses, everyone should know. And so I sent it to her. And since then we've been memorizing scripture mm -hmm. every night. We have a prayer and we take one scripture a week and we memorize it. And then when we first start the beginning of the week, we read it and then we tell each other what it means to us. You know, like what, what did that scripture say to you? What did it mean to you? And then I'll say this, I'll answer hers and, and, and she'll give me hers. And, and I, I, I was just amazed because it wasn't forced. It, it just came so natural. And I was like, well, okay, Lord, so this is the way you want me to minister <laughs> to, her, to her life. So we do that every night. And if she misses me or if she can't get me, I was in Jamaica and she called me and I, she, we, we, she, I couldn't hear her. I, I picked up my phone and she had left my recording. So if she can't get me, she records the prayer and she reads my scripture to me so that when I wake up in the morning, I can turn it on and I can hear her voice and I can hear her prayer mm -hmm. and I can hear her scripture. <clears throat> and that's a, and I've tried it with the, so a couple of the other grands that didn't work with them, but this was the way the Lord wanted me to minister to her. Um, so that was one of the tools that I found. Um, and like I said, it has, it, it's, it's all, it's all him because it, it, it's not forced. 
you could, it's just not forced. It's just so, it's like you get up in the morning or you get ready right before you go to bed. <laughs> you know, hey, we got to have prayer and we got to have our scripture. <laughs> and she memorizes every one. And then the blessing is she was going through some anxiety at school. And she came to me and she was talking to me about it. And I said, hmm, which one of our scriptures did we, you know, did we uh, memorize that would talk to this situation? And we went back and she, and it was the one, be anxious for nothing and everything, you know, um, and everything, well, it's be anxious for nothing in all things. You know where I'm going? Yes. <laughs> I, I don't understand, the, but um. And I said, we have to learn to apply the scriptures that we're learning to our lives because that's what's going to see us through. So when she goes through stuff, we go back and we gleam on the scriptures that we've learned. We go back and we reread them and we remember, well, this is why we, this is what we said. I asked her, what did you tell me about that scripture when we first started it? And she'll say, I told you, it sounds like the Lord wants us to depend on him. And I'll be like, that you got to use the scriptures. There's not, they're not just there for us to memorize. We have to apply them Amen. to our daily lives. And that's where this whole thing has, 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 has blossomed into for us. Um, so that was one area that, that the Lord has blessed me in reaching out you. Um, another area um, that... Um, that for the last 10 years, I guess now, um, the Lord had, had um, my husband walked in one day and, you know, we have a lot of girls in our family and, and we have a lot of girls in our, at that time in our neighborhoods and in our churches. And I looked at my husband, and I said, babe, I said, for some reason, the Lord keeps sending me all these girls and, and, and teenagers and, I need something to do with them because I, I, you know, I, you know, I don't really like kids. So, <laughs> and he looked at me one day and he walked in and he handed me this book and it was called Christian Charm. And I said, oh, okay. I opened it up. And at that time there was six young women, young girls from the ages of nine to 16 that were over my house every day. Why I don't, I, I do now, I know why now, it's because the Lord had a message that he wanted me to share with them. So here in my home, these nine girls would come over once a week, twice a week, every week, and we started opening up this curriculum called Christian Charm. And it actually walked us through the program of what got the beauty from the inside out. You know, how does God wants us to, how does God see us? Not so much how we see us, not so much how others see us, but how does God see us? And we went through a six week program with these girls. And even today, you know, I, I often say, you know, Lord, I, I, did that have an impact on their lives? Did that teach them anything? Did that open up any? you know, doors for them to, to, to grow and get to know you a little better. And they'll come back to me and they'll go, hi, Miss Ginger. <laughs> you remember when you taught me how to clean a brush or you remember how you, when you taught me how to set a table? Um, it was amazing to me um, when this branched over into the church, when I talked to my pastor about it and he brought the program into the church. Um, and I realized from the one at home that you had to break it up in the stages because they were too broad. It was, the, you know, the curriculum. So when we brought it over to the church, I actually broke it down to ages nine to 12, ages 13 to 17, and then 18 to 23. And the program blossomed from my home of six young ladies into a whole curriculum to reach the community. And each time we, uh, the Lord, the Lord blessed me to grow the program over time. Um, we, we went from nine to 12, you know, there was a curricular for them where you taught them things like how to um, 
things as simple as cleaning your brush and your comb and brush. I was shocked how many children or, you know, they didn't know how to simply clean a comb and brush. They didn't know um, how to have a young man in, in, the, in the 13 to 17 pull a chair out for them. I'd have someone come in and we'd set the tables. I had women. I had one come in for cosmetology to show them what looks good on them with lip gloss and for each age, you know, for according to the age group. And I had someone come in and show, show them how to set a table with the napkins and the silverware and the, and the whole nine yards and how to, and, 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 and the Christian charm, how to walk, you know, upright, you know, with, 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 with pizzazz, you know, to let, you know, because I learned that, I, and, and I remember years ago they had a thing called called Charm School, <laughs> and I was introduced to that, so I was able to bring a little of that into the program. Um, so it's just amazing to me how the Lord will grow you up and and show you different ways of reaching your youth, um, and and it's been a phenomenal experience, um, and I. I even when I say, you know, I really don't like teenagers, Lord, what are you doing? He, I, I stopped saying that. You know why? Because he kept sending me more. <laughs> Every time I said that, I got more. <laughs> so I said, okay, Lord, I'm done. No more. I won't be saying that anymore. <laughs> Whatever you send, we will work with them and we will grow with them. So I'm just interested in hearing from you guys. What are some of the ways that you've ministered to your children. Um, I want the tools that I found is simply letting God lead me um, in the direction that he wants to lead me and then using the tools that he's given me and allowing it to develop. Um, like I said, the, it came started out with reading books with the, with, the, with the 10 year old. And here we are at 13 and we're memorizing scripture and we're praying every night and we're applying those scriptures to everyday life. And, and to me, that's a growth experiment that nobody can make up. You can't just, you know, that you don't pick that up out of a hat and say, this is what I'm gonna do. It's, it's gotta be God led. It's gotta be God delivered. Um, and he's got to do it because when he does it, I always tell him when God does it, he does it best. <laughs> So I'm really interested in knowing if are do you guys have any tools or things that you have been blessed to to deal with the youth? Amen. Well, I'll share. Um, what you've shared already has been such a blessing and um, practical wisdom and what God has done, even using your past experiences to to help in the now in the present <laughs> so i'm i am elated um as to how god has used and how he's blessed your life but one of the things that um the lord had me do is when my grands were without a cell phone and so they were using wi-fi and so they said well you know they my grands call me yaya and so they said yaya you have to get on instagram <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, was, I don't know about Instagram. I, I'm just learning about Clubhouse. I'm trying to, to maneuver and navigate <laughs> with with Clubhouse, and um, and it took me a while to 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 um, become accustomed to Facebook. But he used Instagram, and I would touch base with them uh, every week just to ask them how they're doing and. You know, I learned some new, you know, uh, slang <laughs> languages, language that they use and send a scripture. And by doing that, being consistent in doing that, um, it opened the way for them to share how they were, how they feel, even about their relationships, their friendships, some of the things that they're facing in school and they find very difficult. So the Lord used Instagram. That was the tool that the Lord blessed and he blessed us. And what I hear consistent is scripture. I send them scripture. I mean, that's where me and that's where the Lord has been leading me with every, every situation. When we went into the Christian charm, it was like, okay, Lord, you want me to show these girls how to 
And we went through how to dress, you know, how, what looks good on you, what doesn't, you know, um, we did what looks, what, what hair looks good on you? you Cause you know, we got all the, the different wigs and the different hairstyles and every hairstyle's not for every person. And every pair of pants, just because it fits you doesn't mean you should wear it. Uh, you know, we went through that and <clears throat> I came in one day with a horrible outfit on. I knew it was horrible. I put it on right before they walked in the door and they looked at me and they went, oh my God, what is that? Like, what do you have on? And we we did a before and after. And I, I took that off and I put on a more, you know, unrevealing, you know, type outfit. And I said, do you see the difference? You know, we talked about that. We talked about, you know, just, and my husband always said that that's where I got it from. He used to say, just because it fits you doesn't mean you should put it on, babe. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I learned to share with my girls, you know, um, so it, it, it's been a journey, but the journey that I heard from so far, the, the common denominator has been scripture, teaching them the word of God so that when they go through, they've got something to hold on to. Amen. They've got something to, to, to see them to the, through, through, to the next phase where we, we are not without hope because scripture gives us that hope. Yes. And that's what I tell them is the difference between someone who knows the Lord and knows his word and someone that does it. We have hope. We don't have to sit down. Yeah, we might get there for a minute with the oh me, oh my. Mm -hmm. But we ain't got to stay there because we have a we have a scripture to apply to everything that goes on in our lives. It's nothing under the sun that hasn't been that the scripture hasn't addressed Amen. in one way or another. So that's been where I, I, I heard scripture. So thank you. Amen. That was Amen. a blessing. That, Amen. That's Amen. what stuck out for me. I sent them a scripture. We talk about scripture. We talk about the word of God. And then we apply that scripture to our word. Anyone else want to share a way that they might deal with the youth that we can take away? Ginger, I think you shared it all. Thank you so much for that. Um, very, quite a blessing indeed. And your name, Ginger, means a lot as well. And you're doing a lot. Amen. Um, I just recently, I remember that book, um, um, Christian Charm, uh, years, many, many years ago, I was in a church where the pastor's wife had a group of the young girls and was teaching them from that book. And we learned a lot from it, yes. Um, I recently uh, decided to um, spearhead our youth department in the area of the Sunday school um, for the young people, because I, I realized that they're missing a lot in terms of, I love what you're doing with the scripture and teaching them how to pray. And that's what's missing for our youth. Um, so I decided this Sunday is my step out for bringing the, pulling them together so that we can teach them, you know, scripture. And I, you just gave me some ideas as I was listening to you. Um, because when they leave, when they leave the church, they have to navigate through life. And if we don't give them the tools that is necessary, you know, we are definitely setting them up for failure. And um, thank you for sharing what you just shared. As I said, I got some, um, you know, tools uh, from what you have shared. Uh, thank you a lot. And can I say something about Susan Prophetess? Yes. Susan, a gentle soul, a gentle soul. I hear God saying um, he's going to give you double for your trouble, meaning whatever you went through. And, you know, all of us, every one of us on this line, I don't know how long you all have been saved, but there's a thing, yes, called church hurt. But may I tell you something? Uh, we go to work and the boss upset us and, they, and our co-workers hurt us, but we still go back to work, don't we? We don't stop going to work because, you know, but there is something called church hurt. Yes, I'm 
quite aware of that. All of us have experienced that if we're in the church for any period of time. But Susan, what I hear the Lord saying, he's going to give you double for your trouble. He said, whatever um, pain and hurt you had experienced from the first marriage, God is going to fix this marriage so that you're going to be in a happy place. And marriage is intentional. Working on our marriage is always intentional. And so I encourage you to seek the tools that's necessary so that you can make this marriage stay in a safe place. Um, um, marriage is a ministry. A lot of people don't know that. Um, Sister um, Prophetess Denise, my husband and I are campaigners for marriage. We push marriage. This year we celebrate 40 years of marriage. So mm -hmm. we have story to tell. And so we encourage you, uh, Sister uh, Susan, Prophetess Susan, to prophesy over that marriage and watch God do marvelous things. All right. God bless you. Thanks for the opportunity. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share? No. I would care if you don't, <laughs> unless there's someone else. Yes. Katrina? You, you can go first. Okay. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, this is Katrina. Praise the Lord for, for this mighty word that you have brought forth. Um, and the testimonies, Ginger, as well as um, all others who have spoken, truly it has blessed my soul. Um, so one thing that, um, um, that's kind of similar to what, what you've done, um, Ginger, with your, with your um, the 10 year old that, um, you know, over time uh, has come, become a 13 year old um, that I have done with my nieces. I, I don't have children. But um, for years, whenever I would give gifts, I have about 13, yeah, maybe 13 or 15 nieces and nephews. Um, and since their, their youth, since they were born, I would always give them two gifts um, for the holidays. I would give them like a toy, um, and then I would give them something biblical. And so not only would I give it to them during Christmas, but also Easter. And... Um, and recently, um, the other day, my my 11 year old niece, I had given her a Bible. I had given her one when she was first um, born, maybe like two years old. Told my mother, my sister, to read it to her. I don't know if she ever did, but whenever I would be with her, I would read it to her. Um, but um, recently, um, I had given her a a Bible, a children's Bible, and I was surprised when I went on vacation with her and my sister last year, um, she was um, quoting these scriptures. And um, I was like, I knew that she, my sister doesn't take her to church. Um, so I asked her, I said, uh, where'd you learn those scriptures? She said, oh, Antina, I learned it in the Bible you gave me. I read it. And so I was quite shocked, um, but we praise the Lord. We just never know how God would use just simple gifts, um, Christian gifts, Bible scriptures, toys, biblical toys to minister to our youth. So that's how um, the Lord has been using me over the years um, to minister to my children, to my nieces and nephews who I see as my children. Um, they're a hundred miles away from, from me. I don't see them regularly, but I thank you. I do want to incorporate some of the things you did share um, in reaching out to them more regularly um, than I have been. But praise the Lord for your testimony. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, um, that was another thing. When I was asked to be a godmom, I was like, what? A godmom? I got enough children. I got <laughs> there we go again. You're giving me more, Lord. <laughs> but um, that was when I learned to do just what you said. Um, Katrina, is it? Yes. Um, I started every gift. It would be a regular toy, but it would be a children's Bible or a children's book. The dollar store has some wonderful uh, children's books. Um, if you're ever, you know, Dollar Tree, they have a whole section of children's got, uh, Christian books, Bible books, and stories of the Bible. And so I started gathering all those away and every birthday every you know holiday no matter what it was i'd always give them some type of reading material um that talked about the lord you know so i i thank you for that remem remembrance that 
that um, and her mom always her mom always said you always giving them some kind of bible book and I said well how else we go and reach them and teach them if we don't share it with them you got to read it to them too so <laughs> um so they became bedtime stories here in my in my home when my grands or my babies would come over when it was time for them to go to sleep I always used to sing um Jesus loves me um and it's not the normal one it's one I learned in VBS it's a uh, um and, and we'd sing that. And now today, when I meet up with them, they're, they're graduating from college or high school or whatever, and they'll sing that song. Grandma, you remember this song? <laughs> and they'll sing that song to me. And um, whenever they'd be crying, I'd go in and I'd just sing that song to them. And they remember it even to the day. So little songs um and I, I learned a lot of little songs from VBS Christmas time we um we sing happy birthday to Jesus we learned a happy birthday song um to the sound of our we wish you a merry Christmas but it's happy birthday Jesus and we'd sing we'd sing that before we open up on Christmas morning you know that's how we introduce Jesus into the home um, even though they're all grown, they all come home for Christmas <laughs> they all come home for Thanksgiving um and so I thank God for that. Um, I haven't chased them away or, you know, I don't beat them upside their head with the Bible. I don't, um, you know, constantly remind them, you know, you got to be saved or anything like that. I just let God, I let God interact. I let God show us how to interact, Amen. how to be there and how to address through the word of God, what it is that he wants them to hear and know. Amen. I know, Susan, I think you had a comment. Yeah, I was just thinking there's a verse that popped in my head. You know, we're talking about like, you know, um, helping the youth and giving them scripture. It's Proverbs 22, 6, train them up in the ways that they will go, that when they get older, they will not stray away from it. And mm -hmm. I think it's just apply to parents. It applies to everyone that's around the youth. Mm -hmm. That you have a job to to minister to them by scriptures, giving them that scripture and what they need that they won't stray away from it, and they will always continually remember that. Amen. And, amen. And another thing is is music. Yes. Um, they'll get in my car, and you know it's easy to put on the music that they like, but if you're in my car, you have to listen to what I like. <laughs> So, um, and I'll hear them back there and all, and all of a sudden you'll hear them start humming the songs. You know, they'll remember it'll, you know, because they don't, might not listen to it on their own, but the fact that it's on, they'll start humming the songs. They'll start humming the music. <laughs> and I just smile <laughs> and, and let them hum or we, or, you know, we start singing it together. <laughs> so music has always been a, a um a healer for me that's one of the things that i love about um christian our christian walk is because some not all but some of this music some music can speak to your spirit and give you the answer that <clears throat> you've been asking or praying about i could be you know going through something and a song will come on and i'll be like okay lord all right okay thank you <laughs> is that what you wanted me to know you know, it's it's so many ways through 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 the word of God, through the songs that we sing, um, that we can feed our spirits. And as we feed our spirits with the word of God, we're able to give it to our children, to our grandchildren, to each other. Um, a lot of times when we minister to each other, we're actually ministering to ourselves. God will give us something to say to someone else. And when the conversation's over, you go, okay, Lord, thank you. <laughs> that, that, that was so funny. true. <laughs> that was for me, Lord. Thank you. So, and it's the same thing with my grands and with my, my, you know, my children, you know, he'll give me something to say to them. And at the end of it, when we, while we're on the phone or when we hang up, it's like, okay, Lord, I got the message. Thank you. <laughs> it's the same thing. He said, you just told them, I need you to start applying that to your marriage, to your, you know, your daily, to your coworkers, to your, you know, to your daily life, to your neighbors. Amen. Um, and he's recently, you know, done that. Um, 
inviting my neighbors to um, an Easter egg hunt or inviting my neighbors who has children uh, to come out and, and, and um, draw with the chalk, you know, things of that nature has allowed me to open up and get to know my neighbors a little bit by encouraging them to let the children interact and, and get to know each other. That's another thing. Um, we don't, with COVID, when COVID hit, we were already, I call it mean. <laughs> Yes, we were already mean, but when COVID hit, we got meaner. Like, don't come near me, don't touch me, don't look at me. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, ugh. So I'm trying to teach my neighbor, you know, not teach, but encourage my neighbors to let our children get to know each other mm -hmm. because they could be walking down the street and 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 they don't even speak because they don't even know each other and they live right next door. So just encouraging the kids to get to know each other you know we we people don't it doesn't it costs you nothing to say hi good morning and my baby girl my four-year-old granddaughter teaches me this every day she has this personality that she just she 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 loves people um and children and she can get to know a child you know they just they they hit it off right away. They just start playing, <laughs> you know. There's and 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 that's not easy for us uh, or anyone. Sometimes I I mean my my mom be like, you don't have no friends. I'm like, I got friends. I just don't hang out with nobody. Like <laughs> you know, like we talk about things. You know, we laugh. We <laughs> but so I guess and I tried to get into a women's group one time and that didn't work out. I was told that I couldn't do the activities or something that they wanted me to do. <laughs> I, I said, okay, Lord, I guess that wasn't for me, that, that particular group. So I don't know. So what God has for me, that's how I live. It is for me. Amen. Um, and, and it's always a blessing on the other side of through, as long as we can trust him, ask God, trust God and expect his blessings. Matthew 7, 7. That's how I live. <laughs> that, that's what that scripture means to me. Ask God, trust God, and then expect his blessings and live by the word of God. That's all I have. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. That was just wonderful. My goodness. And <laughs> I, I just love the way a plan comes together. You got, you had a plan and then God moved that plan. <laughs> he gave you another one impromptu <laughs> and just allow the Holy Spirit to just flow and just have its way. Um, I, and we were truly blessed. Uh, Denise, did you have a, a comment? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say that I really was so blessed by Deaconess Graves, um, you know, just by listening to the news and all you hear about so much stuff that's happening to our young people. And I pray, you know, that God would do something to our young people. Now, I know sometimes when you pray like that, God's telling you to do. But I am so glad that there were, that that God has touched special people like you, uh, Deacon Ness Graves, uh, you know, that they have that special, you know, um, relationship with. Denisha muted. Denise, can you hear us? You're you're muted. You went on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. My cat yeah. did that. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. There you are. But I was thinking that it, it it was just amazing. I mean, I love that uh, when you were speaking, you were saying that there was hope. There is hope for our, for our children because. You know, you just hear all the negative things, and I'm—I um, was just saying that, that I was—that thank God that he, that He has blessed and put into on this earth in in our environment women of God who are there to minister to the, to the children, to the young people, to you know teach them, you know, to keep their bodies, how to behave, how to walk, and I was that I was so encouraged. Um, by listening to, to this and hearing this, and um, and I just thank God, and I'm continue to pray for you, and you know, pray for I just continue to pray for our children because I know that it's not easy. It's not. It was, it was never easy, 
but it's not easy for our children as it was for us because there's just so much going on with the technology and you know there's just so much there i know that the kids are just dealing with so much more than we dealt with and um i just i i enjoy the message that there is hope that don't give up continue praying for the kids and god will put in our children's lives i mean he'll he'll use us but in our children's lives those women and men of God who will speak also speak into their lives and encourage them to to live the life that he would want them to live. So I, I just thank you, Sister Minister uh, Deaconess Grace, for the message. It, it really resounded with me. It was it was great. I really did really did enjoy it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I am. I also. Is there anyone else that wanted to make a comment? before we move forward? Okay. Um, well, I wanted to thank you so much, um, Deaconess Ginger. You know, we'll be in touch. Um, as you were speaking, I had some other ideas. So I, I have some thoughts. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking about, um, um, but this would just be for girls, um, a retreat next year that would be great and the, I, I have a place in mind um, called Eden I think it's Eden Resorts it's in Lancaster um, so we'll talk and uh, so we can get put that together and I certainly would love uh, Susan to be in on that teaching the, the women to uh, the girls you know um, about cosmetology taking care of their skin and they would just, that would just be a wonderful time in the Lord and, and using the book. Can you give me the author uh, of that book, Christian Charm? Um, if you don't, if you don't know it, um, text it to me. Or Pastor uh, Sharon, if you, uh, I know both of you. I'm on mute, sorry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'll make sure you get that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I just sent it to another young lady. Um, and she says, um, I want to do a charm, a charm school, she says, but I don't want it Christian based. I said, well, oh. I, and so I, I sent her one of the students, but she said, this says Christian charm. I said, yes, but the principles are still the same. I it said, is. you can still apply, you know, what you're looking for. And at the same time, I'm thinking and get the word of God while you're dealing with Amen. it. But... <laughs> <laughs> Amen. How yes. you choose to that use was it is up to you, but mm -hmm. here's what the Lord gave me. So, Amen. That's wisdom. I think it's Emily. Emily, um, yeah, like I said, it was written down on my little paper. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no problem. But it's um, gone. This, yes, text me. I, I appreciate that. And yeah, the Lord didn't want me to read from a script today. He wanted That's impromptu. Right. Like he, he kept saying impromptu, impromptu. And I kept saying, well, let me get this outline together and he kept saying impromptu impromptu and then he said okay you ain't listening I'm gonna take the whole thing away <laughs> <laughs> love it I love it the author is Emily Hunter yes, Emily sir. Hunter yeah that's okay mm -hmm. thank you you're welcome I love to uh give that to my girls they're 16 and uh mm -hmm. they'll be 17 I can't believe it they'll be 17 in, in August um already <laughs> so my last um, group <laughs> was my girls my twins and three and four of their friends mm. they would literally come after school in high school for one day a week for and it was only like an hour mm. and we'd sit down and go through each lesson so it's been a blessing for them mm. beautiful I love it I'm looking forward to that I'm looking forward to that and even when you were talking about the tools I was sharing with um Katrina the other day how I, the Lord gave me an idea for my son, um, who's, he's 36 now. Well, he's 37, I'm sorry. His time is just flying. <laughs> and he always talks about health. He's, he's into health. He's very, very athletic. Um, and so I told him a long time ago, why don't you do a podcast? That would be great. Um, and he says, oh, I'm not sure if that's really what I want to do. So the Lord placed on my heart to write a book for him. And 
So I'll take his story and I'll write a book and um, for for him. And I know it's going to bless many, touch many. And he's just going, to, he's really very athletic, but he's been through a lot. <laughs> he's put a lot of demand on his body, but I know his story is going to bless others. And, and listening to you, I want to do the same for my grands as well. I'm going to write a story for them, uh, a book for them. And um, both of them have something to share, especially uh, Kiera. She's been through some things with health. And I think that that would also make an impact. So thank you. That that spurred um, an, another idea in, in using a tool for books, writing a book and reaching many and use, using their story to bless others. Praise God. So I thank you for... Um, you mentioned scripture, you mentioned stories, music, songs. These are all ways that we can touch our youth, bless our youth and connect with them. And so it's been a tremendous blessing. Um, thank you so much again, Ginger. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And I'm, I have the pleasure of making announcements before you go. And, and I want to say this, this is what women's ministry to me, this is what it's about. It's not just about having a speaker come, you know, um, and, and we hear that, although that is powerful in itself, but it's the connection uh, of sharpening one another and hearing from one another. And also we can support one another. Um, um, so I hope that we are able to stay connected. Let us know what's going on in your lives. Um, a matter of fact, I think at this time, I'm going to allow any uh, announcements. Anyone has announcements from, from their church or something that they're involved, uh, that they're doing? Now's the time you can do so. Well, for us, we have a couple of things coming up on the 27th. We This month is considered Mental Health Month. And so we do have a, a program that um, my husband, who is a certified counselor, is going to be doing via Zoom. And it has to do with trauma, stress, um, mental health. And so that's going to be on the 27th of this month. It's a Zoom. And so if you need that information, I'll forward it to Denise and you could gather it from her. And then on the 17th of June, every year we have a marriage conference because, as I said earlier, we are campaigners for marriage. So on the 17th of June, we have our annual marriage conference and it's going to be from 10 o'clock in the morning until two. If you're also interested, um, Denise has that information. She can forward it to you as well. We do have a website. If you want to go on the website, you can gather the information. And that website is the number two hearts as the number one dot org. The number two hearts as one dot org. God bless you all. Amen. I look forward to the marriage, um, to the marriage fellowship. Uh, Glenn and I will certainly, we certainly plan on being there. So we're looking forward to it. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anyone yes, else? I'd like more information on that as well. That I'd I like certainly, mm -hmm. I'll send it. And I need your website too. I guess your YouTube channel so I can tune in and look at some of your, um, I'd love to be more active and more apart. Amen. Is there anyone else? I don't want to. Okay. Um, if you think of anything later and you can connect with me, I'll make sure that I pass that information on if you don't if it doesn't come to mind at this time. Okay, ladies, um, if you have any questions, comments, prayer requests, and to receive link information, please write me at dgreen. Uh, there's an, it's an E on the end of my name. <laughs> my, my husband always stresses that. And so <laughs> uh, I've, I've learned through our 31, coming up on our 31 years of marriage, that uh, please place an E after green. 
uh, dgreen at arisewithpurpose.org. That's dgreen at arisewithpurpose.org. Our next session will be held on Saturday. It's always on Saturdays at 10 a.m. July 22nd this year. And it, we will hear from um, our dynamic speaker, Vashti, may all, she's also known as Tina, Vashti Gorman. Okay, uh, she is a, one of the friends and alumni from Drexel University and, um, and also Katrina is also an alumni from, from there. And she's um, my husband, that's his alma mater. And that's how we connected. But she is a wonderful woman of God. And she is so excited <laughs> to, to come. So she's looking forward to, to speaking. If you would like to bless the speaker, um, our dear woman, a lovely woman of the hour, Ginger, please send a cash app to dollar sign, capital G for Ginger, capital G for Graves. Again, that's dollar sign, capital G for Ginger, capital G, Graves, Ginger Graves. If you'd like to bless this ministry, you can send a cash app to dollar sign, Arise Woman, that's capital A for Arise, capital W, Woman. Again, that's dollar sign, Arise Woman, capital A, Arise, capital W for Woman. Or you can write me at Denise Green PayPal. And we do have a post office box, uh, care of Denise Green, Arise with Purpose Women's Ministry. That's post office box 1145, Glenside, PA, 19038. Again, that's Arise with Purpose Women's Ministry and care of Denise Green, post office box 1145. Glenside, PA, 19038. Amen. This has been fabulous, fabulous. And not only, um, not only inspirational, edifying, and exhortation, but it's also been fun. <laughs> it's also been fun. And I love, um, Ginger, I love your way. It's just down to earth. You're just down to earth. I don't know when you said that you went to a women's ministry and you said that you couldn't, you know, something was off-putting there. That really just was grieving to me because to me, we should be able to come together as women. And um, I, I really was uh, a bit grieved by that. But we're, well, we're glad that you're here with us. So <laughs> you, you certainly welcome here anytime. Praise God. If there are no other announcements or comments, then I'm going to ask lovely Ginger to close us out in prayer. Okay. Let us pray. Most holy and everlasting God, our heavenly father, we come before you, Lord, just thanking you for this another day. Thanking you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thanking you, Lord, for these women of God that you've introduced me to today. Thanking you, Lord, for your ministry in general, just allowing us to come together and to share um, openly and honestly and to be able to know that you've got our back no matter what we go through, as long as we ask you and trust you and then sit back and just let your daddy bless you. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for allowing us to encourage each other through the word of God. I just thank you for your word. I thank you for life itself. I thank you for every time I open my eyes and I'm able to share your word with someone else, Lord. I just thank you because you are awesome. You are an awesome God. And thank you for these awesome women of God mm -hmm. that are taking the time out to let others get to know you, mm -hmm. to let others know that we have hope in you, mm -hmm. that it's not mm -hmm. over. It's, it's not as, as 
it's not over. Mm. With you, God, we all things are possible. And I thank you for teaching us to know that through your word and through your, each other, as we share, as we love up on each other in your word, mm. that you give us hope, you give us peace, you give us encouragement. And I thank you for the encouragement today. I ask you to bless every home represented here. Touch our homes, touch our families, touch our children, touch our husbands. Lord, you continue to wrap your precious arms of protection around us. Mm. Touch deaconess, touch prophetess, Denise, Lord, and this ministry arise. God, continue, Lord, to allow her to touch the lives of many. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, Vanessa? Yes. Uh, yes. Would you pray for our speaker? Okay. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving and praise. And I pray for Sister um, Deaconess Ginger Graves. Thank you, Father, for her encouragement and for the wisdom that she presented to us today. Thank you for giving her the stamina and the wisdom to minister to her family and to her husband, Father. Thank you for giving her the ministry of the Holy Spirit to encourage her and give her comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise amen. the Lord. Thank you all. Thank you, Vanessa, for that wonderful prayer. Thank you for the closing prayer. And thank you all. Thank you, Susan, for coming. And we look forward to seeing you with beautiful faces again, hopefully on July 22nd, if you are able to come. God bless. Go in peace with the master and arise. Amen. God bless you. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.